how do I choose materials for bumpers? A bumper is used in the 2025 FIRST Robotics Competition to protect teams' robots from things that they might see on the field, like other robots, and things that are constructed. Teams put bumpers on their robots in order to protect things like their frame and mechanisms that are inside of them. Teams have been required to have bumpers since the 2008 season. And ever since then, bumpers have kind of stayed the same in terms of construction and different materials that you could use. However, in the fall of 2024, FIRST put out some guidance in order for teams to expand on what they could already use for bumpers. And this will impact how teams construct bumpers in the 2025 season. The ideal bumper for an FRC robot in 2025 will be able to take hits at really high speeds, like we've seen teams recently with the standardization of higher power motors and faster sprint times across the field. They'll be able to take hits like that, but they'll also be able to take glancing blows, like just running into a field element or maybe even hitting your alliance partner in a scoring area. The bumper that we wanted to choose would be built for both of these. It wouldn't be built for your worst hits, and it would also be built in order to take kind of the best situation hits. You want whichever foam you choose to be able to spring back after taking these hits. Announcements earlier in the season laid out a few things that have become legal for bumpers more materials, and more materials that you can use for a backer. In terms of foam, what's going to be legal for the 2025 season are the following different foams. The first one is backer rod. Backer rod is a type of solid pool noodle that is a long extrusion made of solid polyethylene foam. It's a lot like what you see here. Backer rod is usually differentiated by the density present in the foam. Backer rod is usually a little bit more dense than the pool noodle that you might find at like your Walmart or any of your box stores. When choosing a foam, it's important to note that density of the foam is not exactly equal to the firmness of the foam. Density can tell you a, a number of different things, like how the foam will crush over time and how much force it's going to dissipate, but the actual feeling of the foam is going to be a lot different based on what you choose. It's important to actually have the foam in your hand and feel it before you put it on your robot. The second type of legal foam is going to be your foam floor tiles. These are EVA foam floor tiles that you might find on your FTC field. EVA is a little bit more dense of a foam and usually thicker. Depending on the pattern on the top of the EVA foam tile, the foam can squish differently. So that's something you should pay attention to. EVA tiles are easy for teams to get and also have one of the highest densities available of any of the legal foams. However, during the course of our testing, we found that when a team takes a hard hit against the stage or an alliance partner using the EVA foam as a bumper, it doesn't dissipate the force as well as a soft foam because it lacks squishiness. Teams should not use the EVA tile on its own because it doesn't provide the same amount of protection as a different foam might. This is a PU foam or a polyurethane foam. You might be familiar with this as a memory foam or a little bit of a softer foam that you might want to use in your bumper. However, we did some testing with this as a part of the backer material, because any foam is allowed in your backer material, and found that under pressure, it compressed way too easily and wasn't a good material for dissipating force. This is not a legal bumper material, and we don't recommend it as a bumper material, because it isn't legal, or a backer material, because it didn't perform well. The next type of legal foam is a solid polyethylene foam. Now, there are a lot of different types of polyethylene foam out there, and there are some types that we don't know if they will be legal yet. The ones that are allowed and legal in this documentation that FIRST has put out is a solid polyethylene closed cell foam with density between 1.5 and 3 pounds per cubic foot. Some of the types of polyethylene foam are expanded polyethylene foam and cross-linked polyethylene foam. Now, these are two types of foams that we don't know if they're going to be legal this year. So when we did our testing to figure out which type of foam that we wanted to recommend to teams this year, we didn't include these. That's because they are technically different than just a polyethylene foam. And we're waiting for further clarification in the rules this year from first. The type of solid polyethylene foam that we tested and that we're recommending to teams this year is the solid polyethylene extrusion foam. This is a type that has holes in it and has a variety of ways that you can mount it to your frame. The last type of legal foam is a hollow pool noodle. 
Teams are familiar with these as it's sort of the standard for what first teams have been using for bumpers. However, this material is not great for bumpers. It crushes easily and has a low density. In our findings, the hollow pool noodles performed the least well of any material that we tested. During our testing, we also wanted to see what would happen if teams wanted to use their hollow noodles in a different way. What we found is that by layering the noodles inside each other, we were able to dissipate more force, but the effort to do this and to try to keep them together is something that we can't recommend that teams do in this season. We tested a number of different backers in order to figure out which would be the best at dissipating force in addition to whatever foam you put in front of your bumpers. In this testing, we tested plastics, like an HDPE, a metal, and uh, 1 8 aluminum, and also 1 16th aluminum, and also wood, as teams are familiar with construction now. This is currently the construction of a 2024 bumper. You'll see that teams are required to use 3 quarter inch plywood, and also pool noodles on top of that. Through our testing, we found that these newer materials, like plastics and aluminums, didn't do as good of a job at dissipating force as wood did. Plastic tended to bend as soon as it got run into by either a robot or something that was static on the field. And aluminum, while it did do well in some of our lower load testing, it unfortunately, once it hit the field, it was able to bend as well and create damage to the robot's frame. Wood performed the best out of all of these options because of its ability to also dissipate some of the force as well as the bumper in front of it. Wood is also accessible to teams and they're familiar with the construction of it. There are different types of wood that you can use for your bumper. Teams recommend using high quality, void-free plywood, such as a Baltic birch, an aircraft plywood, or eucalyptus plywood. Those plywoods are the best to use, but they can be difficult to find. If you use a traditional plywood that you can find in the store as a backer, that's also fine. Here at Andymark, we did a number of different tests in order to determine what our recommendation would be for teams to use in the 2025 season for bumpers. These tests included a pendulum test in order to measure force at small collisions, and also a test where we ran a 115-pound chassis into a truss leg in order to simulate some of the worst hits that a chassis could handle. Based on these tests, both at small collisions and at larger collisions, indicated that teams should use something that may seem a little bit familiar to you. We opted to use a soft foam and a harder foam in front of a wooden backer. While we don't know if multi-material foams will be legal, we know that any material can be present in the backer. We learned that solid pool noodles or backer rod with a density of two pounds per cubic foot performed very well, but they performed even better with an EVA tile behind them. So because we don't know if two different foams will be legal in the actual bumper, we're using the EVA foam as a backer material along with the wood so that we can get the performance that we want with the foams that we want in a legal matter. If you do still have hollow noodles lying around for the 2025 season, we recommend that you put an EVA tile in between noodles and your wood as another piece of backer to help dissipate more force. This will not provide the same amount of protection as your solid pool noodle, but it will add a little bit more protection. After their backer material and their bumper material, teams will have to encase the bumper in a fabric. Teams can opt to use one color bumpers or flipping bumpers, which means that some of the fabric will be blue and able to be flipped up in order to be red. Teams will also have to have their numbers visible on the bumpers in order to be identified clearly during the match. There are a number of different ways that teams can choose to arrange their bumpers on their robot. Some teams may opt for each side having one long piece on each. Some teams may opt to have one piece that is their entire bumpers or a full wraparound bumper. In the past, some teams have used the C-shape and corner bumpers in order to achieve some of their corners being protected. Now that we have teams that uh, have more power and more acceleration across the field, we want to plan on having a full wraparound bumper on each side. You can extend the corners of your corner bumpers or your C-shape in order to provide this full wraparound. Bumpers should be mounted to your chassis in a way that prevents them from moving and also secures them for the entire match. Teams have mounted bumpers in a number of different ways over the years. Some have used bolts and nuts while screwing them in every match. Some teams have used latches, and some teams have used pull pins. Be sure to test each of these and figure out what works best for your team as a solution. Overall, bumpers have more options than ever this season, which means they're a little bit more complicated. However, 
If you follow our guidelines and you do some testing on your own as a team, you'll be able to come up with a solution that works for your team and helps you out at the competition. We can't wait to see what you've come up with when we run into you at the competition this season. And that is how you choose materials for bumpers.